In this video, I'm going to introduce you to dynamics, which is the study of forces acting upon an object or a system of objects. Now, up until this point, we've only been studying what's called kinematics. We studied motion without any reference to the forces causing that motion. Well, when you put together kinematics with dynamics, you get Newtonian mechanics, which is something we will study throughout the majority of this course. Now, a force can be defined as a push or a pull that is acting on an object or a system of objects. Remember, you define the system. So in this image to the left, this man is applying a force on a crate. On the image to the right, the man is applying a force to a system of objects that I will define to include the crate and the trash can. A force can cause a change in the state of motion of an object. A change in a state of motion means a change in velocity. That's what a change in state of motion means. So keep that in mind, a change in velocity. Also, force is a vector quantity, so it has both magnitude and direction. And the base SI units for force is a newton. Now, I want to show you something here. Not all forces necessarily result in a change in the state of motion of an object or a system of objects. And remember, change in state of motion is with reference to a change in both the speed and the direction or a change in the velocity. I am going to go ahead and apply a force to this crate. I am applying a force on the crate to the right, but there's something else applying a force on the crate to the left and canceling out the man's 50 Newton force to the right. And you know enough about physics to know that that's going to be the force of friction. That's the leftward force of the road onto the crate, and it is opposing the motion. So we do not have a change in the state of motion, even though there is a force applied. The key is that the net force, or the sum of these forces, one to the left, one to the right, equals zero, increasing the force to the right now to 100 newtons, we still see there is no motion. There's no change in the state of motion. There's no change in velocity. Now I'm going to apply even a greater force, a 150 newton force to the right, and we now see the crate accelerate from rest, and it is now moving off to the right. You can see the speed meter on the screen here. This object's speed is increasing over time, thus this object is accelerating. Now watch this. I'm going to stop applying this force. Let's see what happens. Speed is decreasing. The crate is decelerating. There's a change in the state of motion. Therefore, there must be some sort of net force acting on this crate. And it's not the man anymore, but it's the force of friction that is opposing the motion. And now the crate has stopped. The crate's velocity is zero. Now, let me show you one more thing here. I'm going to turn this to a low friction environment. I'm going to apply a force here. And you can see all of the force now is to the right. So there's one force acting upon this crate with reference to its direction of motion to the right. That one force would be the force applied. And you can see here that even in the absence of the man applying a force, this crate will remain in this state of motion unless acted upon by some other force. So it will simply keep moving to the right because there's no forces, no net forces acting in the left direction, no net forces acting in the right direction to speed it up. And therefore it will maintain this speed and this constant state of motion until there is some force acting upon it. Okay, so uh, forces 
are caused by an interaction of two objects. That is critical. Two objects are required for there to be a force. Now, there are two different types of forces. There are contact forces, which are acting directly upon an object. So the man applying a force to the crate is a contact force. The force of friction, which was the force of the road onto the crate, was also a contact force. But there are also forces known as long-range forces. And I will refer to these as field forces, typically in class. But long-range forces act upon an object and don't necessarily have to have physical contact. So these are forces that will act on an object with no physical contact needed. Now, let's start off by looking at the forces of this man on the crate. We're going to just look at the crate and we're going to talk about forces exerted on the crate. And the first force you see here is the rightward force of the man on the crate. Notice I'm referencing two objects explicitly. The man, the crate. Next, we have the downward force of the earth on the crate. Now let's talk about these two. Force number one is a contact force because the man is in direct contact with the crate. Force number two is the force of the earth on the crate. All right. That is a long range force. Okay. So and also notice these arrows that have been drawn on the center of the crate. So we have forces that are acting in the parallel direction, i.e. left and right, and up and down that are also acting. Now let's look at the upward force of the road on the crate. There must be some upward force and with the crate touching the surface of the road, also, this crate is not accelerating up into the sky vertically or down. It is in a constant state of motion. It is not moving, okay? So, therefore, if there's a downward force of the earth on the crate, there must be a upward force of the road on the crate, okay? So, I want to say... Again, this crate does not move. I want to preface this, which means we have one more force that is acting. If the crate is not moving, we have the leftward force of the road on the crate. All right, so those are the four forces that we have in this scenario. Uh, only one of them is a long-range force. The rest of these are contact forces. And notice each one of these is a force exerted by an object, the man, the road, the, um, the earth, onto the crate. So it involves an interaction of two objects. Okay. Now here's something pretty cool. This is me, guys. This is me rappelling off of the New River Gorge Bridge in West Virginia. All right, it's an 876-foot high bridge, and once a year, they will close the bridge down for outdoor enthusiasts like myself, okay? So let's go ahead and look at what's going on with this as far as the forces acting upon my body, all right? So I am on a rope. I am connected to a rope, and that is the only thing I am in contact with, so the first force we have is the downward force of the earth on me. Okay, that is a long-range force or a field force. The only other force acting here is the upward force of the rope on me. And so that would be a contact force. All right, guys, so this was a great introduction to dynamics you know that forces um, require an interaction of two objects, and I believe now you're able to look at those objects 
and to understand which force is causing the actual motion, if at all. I'll see you guys in class.